Hello, everyone. Welcome to Webinar Wednesday with Advisicon. Thank you so much for joining us. Today, we'll be talking about project management communication using Microsoft 365. A little bit about myself. I have a background in math education, so I've got a lot of problems. Uh, and yet I enjoy problem solving, especially when we use technology as a tool in solving. Interestingly enough, math is the basis for much of these tools and technology. So math wins again. I do have experience in managing projects using Microsoft 365 as tools and solutions. I am Microsoft certified professional in Teams. And I've been teaching for nearly 10 years. I definitely enjoy the knowledge transfer process and empowering individuals through knowledge. I do have additional certifications in Microsoft Project and SharePoint. Here at Advisicon, our amazing team of trainers, developers, and technology consultants enjoy helping you maximize your productivity and impact. And we do that through a blend of technology and methodology consulting. Here's an overview of our agenda today. We'll talk about the importance of communication and project management. We'll look at considerations on when to use which type of communication methods, and then we'll dive into the Microsoft 365 tools with a demonstration. Let's get to it. The importance of communication can really not be overstated. Communication is one of the knowledge areas found in uh, the PMI, um, the PMBOK. So it's definitely uh, an area that you need to pay special attention to as a project manager. When asked what is communication, we could look at a lot of different areas. Um, we get many answers that range from one end of, uh, of the spectrum to another. Is communication internal or is it external? Uh, is it formal? Is it informal? Uh, you know, these, these questions ask who are we communicating with, right? Uh, and, and even how are we communicating? So there's a lot of dimensions to communication. It could be an official or unofficial communication. You know, the, the way we could approach those are, are going to be very different. Written versus oral. And then uh, this is one that uh, maybe is even more challenging nowadays um, with uh, a lot of remote work, and that's verbal and nonverbal communications. Uh, when, should we con when should we consider using one or the other? When is one or the other um, important? And how do we approach those? So that's uh, communication at a high level. Um, I want us to have this idea that communication is the exchange of ideas, simply as, as that. It's, it, it comes from the root word commune, which means to like have a shared idea, um, to even have a, a shared vision, a shared uh, goal, is, is to see things the same way. Humes is quoted as saying, the art of communication is the language of leadership. Think about your role as a project manager. You, you, while you have that title manager, you are also a leader. Uh, you are, you are the integrator. You are the hub of a project that uh, that uh, touches all areas, whether it's the stakeholders or the the project resources. You are a leader. So, the how you communicate and and that art to it, um, that is um, how you're perceived as a leader. You know, it's estimated that up to ninety percent of a of a PM's time is spent communicating. So we ought to be contemplating if we're doing well to fulfill that role. And as mentioned before, communication is neither one dimensional nor one directional. A communication like any art can have many mediums, uh, such as email, uh, phone call, or you know, it can go multi-dimensional communication, such as an in-person meeting, which now then you're talking about written, spoken, and yet even unspoken, the, those nonverbal uh, forms of communication. Again, uh, coming back to the idea of communication, of, of commonness, we're out to have the goal of, of having a shared idea or even an attitude, a, a way to approach. That's where you get persuasiveness in communication. You want people to have the same attitude as you. Um, it's easy to believe that the ideas we exchange are gonna be perfectly received as we intended it, right? We like to think that our communications are like a fax machine and that the image sent is the exact image received. Um, however, our team members, you know, they are beautifully and wonderfully made and they have their own unique experiences and values. And that creates a filter for that message. They will see uh, that message through their own unique lens. 
uh, you know, so what is urgent to one person may not necessarily uh, be urgent um, to the receiver. What the the sender is like, you know, this is very important. It may not get to the receiver with that same urgency. So um, how do we bridge that gap as a, as a leader in project management? How do we help that? And we'll, we'll talk about that today. Some might say communication is confusing, right? It really doesn't take much for communication to break down. You know, our communication styles are as unique as our fingerprints. You know, word choices, whether they're technical or otherwise, can lead also to confusion. Oh, and don't get me started about acronyms. It's very helpful <laughs> if everyone knows them, but you got to make sure that everyone knows them. Furthermore, think about lines of communication. You know, you can email, you can chat, uh, you can face to face. You know, in, in this technology filled world, some will say it's easier than ever to communicate. I would argue it's it you know it can be more uh, challenging, more confusing. Think about this: in a two-person team, how many lines of communication are there? There's really just one. How about a three-person team? Well, there's three, and I'm, I'm talking about person to person, right? If if there's if there's person A, B, and C, A to B, B to C, and A to C, right? There is three. Now let's let's grow our 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 project team. What if there's five? Can you can you do the math? How many uh, lines of communication are there between five, a team of five? Well, it's ten. It's not five. It's crone. So ten possible lines of communication, again involving email, chat, face to face. Ten possible ways for the telephone game to go wrong. So how do we overcome that? And we'll talk about that. Um, to wrap up this section, uh, you know what is communication? It's simply an exchange of ideas. We want to have commonness, right? We, at least that's what we hope. We hope that the message we send is the exact message received. And, but as we talked about it, it's not always true. There are filters and experiences that we use to uh, receive messages. Um, and communication can be confusing. We just want to acknowledge that so that when we approach communication within our PM teams, uh, we, we, we take the consideration, we take uh, all this into into factor and um, again you know 90 percent of our job is communication so let's do it well let's do it um, right and you know if I, I can speak from experience when when communication breaks down that's just so challenging and that just adds another dimension to uh, accomplishing the project so let, let's talk about some solutions well in the PMBOK uh, the, the, there's a whole knowledge area, as mentioned before, about communications and having a uh, communications management plan. In the PMBOK, it's described as how project communications will be uh, one planned, structured, implemented, and monitored, all for the goal of effectiveness. So we acknowledge communication can be challenging, let's be effective with it. Here's some areas that you want to define as a project manager. You know, the what, what will be communicated. Um, how often should we be expecting communication? Uh, who sends what? Uh, does everyone need to uh, check in with their um, progress and their updates? And who's going to receive those updates? Who's responsible for that? Um, what methods or technologies are we going to use? Again, today's communication world, there's so many options. Which one are we going to use? or even which one, sometimes we use multiple. And as I mentioned before, those acronyms can be very challenging. And a PMBOK rec recommendation is to use a glossary of common terminology. That way the whole team, whether it's internal, external, or a blend are, are on the same page and reduces one of those uh, triggers or factors for, com for communication to go uh, wrong. Uh, really, as a PM, your job is to communicate the expectations. Here's what I expect from our team, and here's what you can expect from our team. You know, we're, we're always going to look upstream and downstream uh, of what's coming. So we want to know when can we expect uh, things from upstream, and uh, how do we feed downstream? So we want to make sure we, we clarify that. And you know, at this point, when you've established your communications uh, management plan, that opens the opportunity for team members to ask questions, and um, you know, that way they feel like they're heard as a as a team member, and that uh, you validate them and their concern. Another area, uh, one of the tools and techniques um, mentioned in the um, 
management plan is to cr- make sure you have a uh, project management information system or um, here's your acronym again, a PMIS. The, the function of it is to ensure that stakeholders can easily retrieve information they need in a timely manner. Um, basically, when someone wants to find out the information necessary to their job function, do they know where to find it? And that's what this, the PMIS uh, establishes to do, is to put things, uh, organize uh, uh, the data, the information needed in a location or locations where your team can easily retrieve it. And you know there are many ways to set up a PMIS. It, it doesn't have to be uh, technology, computer uh, base. Some people achieve a PMIS using pen and paper. And that can work when our teams are local and you know share the same space. However, uh, today many teams do work remotely and span several time zones. So um, I would recommend considering a tool or tools that is accessible via the internet. Um, when we look at tools within the Microsoft 365 uh, tenant, uh, there's lots to offer there. Microsoft 365 does offer connectivity. Um, we, we do check that box about being uh, internet-based, cloud-based, um, so that no matter which time zone, you know whether your team travels or your team are already across those time zones, they have access to these items. Um, at the same time, you don't want your data to, to be necessarily available to all team members. That's just, uh, you know, you want to provide some controls um, management. So the, um, within 365, you, uh, Microsoft 365, you can set your permissions and, um, and roles so that uh, the right team members have the right access. So that's um, about communication and, and, and some possible solutions. Establish some plans, establish a PMIS. Now let's move on to our next section to consider, um, you know, what, what kind of messages we're sending, and um, what kind of communications we need to pair with them. The types of messages we send, as stated earlier, can range from formal to informal, urgent to when you get when you get to it, uh, official, unofficial. It's a lot of dimensions when it comes to sending a, uh, a communication. So we want to consider um, other things such as uh, what's what you see here. What you see here on screen is urgency, and um, you know, is is it urgent? Um, you know, that will affect the type of communication we should send. Um, where are people located? Uh, will affect it as well. Who's my audience? I think is a, is a very big one to consider. You know, am I speaking to? Uh, Technical people who need to visualize it, um, you know, that's also the the message type, or or is it or is it just a you know a few words, status update, you know, again that that determines who I'm sending to. Of course, we need to we do need to consider cross cultural uh, languages, um, things like that. The concern here is just to highlight the type of message we're sending and make sure we consider uh, how we send it. Looking at this uh, graph here, it's just kind of the idea that the com- the type of message we're sending has some complexity, and how does that connect with the senses and um, and also the 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 time length of the um, the activity, uh, what the message itself, how much time will be needed to uh, explain it. So uh, starting at the bottom of the, the graph, um, or if you look on the horizontal axis, you can see complexity, and on the vertical axis, you will see these, um, these icons, all you know, PowerPoint uh, stock here, and uh, that the, as, as, and this idea is that as the message, messages get more and more complex, you should consider adding more and more senses to, to the input. Uh, for example, I start on the bottom left of the graph. Um, if, is the message uh, a done or not done, right? Is that, a, is that the type of communication we're sending uh, that's very low complexity, you know, one steps, uh, short duration of the activity, right? It, it's not really gonna take a lot of um, uh, time effort to, to complete the communication. And if you're just using a small group, well, then you really don't need to uh, use many senses. Uh, I, I put the icons for the e- e- for the eyes there, so an email will suffice. For example, a chat will suffice. Now let's up the complexity. Let's look at um, our status report uh, that has details, uh, that has many parts, many steps. 
many sections, uh, you know, some some medium duration to, uh, to go through. And let's say you're, you're talking about um, three or more people or three to five, three to seven, you know, a few people. Well, now we might want to increase the senses, including a um, an audio recording or uh, a short screen record or even a quick meeting. Again, we're just trying to be mindful. Uh, these aren't hard and fast rules. We're just trying to make sure we, we're considering the things we're sending because uh, we want to avoid communication breakdown. Communication breakdown leads to frustration. That just becomes another problem to solve on this project. Uh, so lastly, let's complete the graph here. Let's go to the complex uh, extreme end. You know, you got complex details, multi-step, long duration, and, and many, many people. We definitely want to increase the senses to not only the visual, the audio, but even maybe the nonverbal. And here is definitely where you want to call that, that formal meeting, because with so many steps, that definitely ups the level of complexity and the types of messages you need to send. And also, you as the, as the sender, you want to make sure, you know, as the complexity goes up, that you it, it's being received the way you intended. So you allow that channel of, of return feedback, that, that time to clarify the message sent. So just consider the types of messages you send. And now this this begs the question, so what kinds of tools can we use within uh, the project management sphere and perhaps even within Microsoft 365? Well, we'll look at that in our next section. Not all communication needs to be uh, live and face-to-face -face and, and necessarily using uh, sentences, if you will, uh, using complete sentences to express an idea. Um, for example, look in front of us on the screen, you can see a RACI matrix. Uh, RACI is an acronym for Responsible, Accountable, Consulted, or Informed. As, as a PM, you may have probably used this or heard of this in your experience. And the idea is that you can give an update, you can communicate your uh, progress on a task by uh, changing the field here. You can say, it's, is it in progress? Is it done or is it not started? And furthermore, we are communicating as a team to know who's responsible for the activity, who's involved or informed rather, who's consulted, who makes sure that the task is um, it's finalized, and then um, ultimately who's the accountable one. Um, and with a racy matrix, there can only be one accountable person. Um, if there's split accountability, then really no one's held accountable and no one really wants to make sure it gets done. So that's why we say one accountable person. So I just want to offer a low tech solution to communication when it comes to your project management team. A RACI matrix uh, definitely accomplishes that. You can still uh, communicate on the status of your activities, um, but maybe not uh, it is very on the lo low complexity communication side. So it, you can use a low complexity, a low sensory tool. Our next tool is maybe an all too familiar tool, email. And I won't spend much time here, but I just wanna show you some features that you could utilize in your project communication. First of all, I would encourage you to set up a group that you could email everyone and you're sure that all people who need to hear a message are, are on the group. When I hover over this uh, demo group that I've made, I just wanna show you some of the features here. You can create the settings so that no one can, uh, that doesn't belong in the group can enter. You as a group owner can restrict that. And uh, you can uh, be sure of who is in the group. And then there's even associated uh, files on a, sh on a SharePoint site that you, that's set up with this group, much like a Microsoft 365 group. To set this up, um, well, I, I wanna show you some of the features of the groups. So first of all, to set it up, you can uh, search for groups and you can either create a new group. I'm going to browse a group. I want to I want to look at that demo group that I made and just see what's uh, some more features behind the curtain. So you can be sure to set up membership uh, roles if they're a member or an owner, adding members and controlling access. Maybe so a resource comes and goes. Uh, an email uh, conversation there you have your your email conversation is tracked because it's tied to the group 
and then f associated files that would um, be tied to emailing with this group. So it does keep some centralization of files and it's all through Outlook. So um, is this scalable? Absolutely, we can just keep adding members, uh, keep adding files. Uh, you know, we can communicate internally and externally using Outlook. Uh, definitely integration of files. You definitely in your email can paste pictures to increase your understanding of the um, the topic to improve everyone's that that, that everyone's going to be on the same page. And of course, accessible anytime, anywhere, even at one a.m. There's definitely a low to medium complexity. Um, mess types of messages can be sent here. And then consider the, the urgency. You can mark it as such. You can mark it as important. Um, that way your team knows uh, what to, what to uh, that they need to look at it um, ASAP. And of course, you, you're, you've configured your audience and you can definitely configure your message. Take the time to uh, spell it out correctly. Use um, the same features that you would find in Word, such as uh, bullet points, tables, things like that, all through Outlook. The next tool to show you is one that I'm really excited about, and that's Microsoft Teams. Microsoft Teams allows communication, collaboration, integration, uh, whether it's, in, it's within the Microsoft 365 ecosystem or outside. So one of the key features is right away we can communicate around uh, one channel, uh, a team, these are teams, and when I uh, create subgroups under the teams, those are channels, and I can create conversations within just that channel. So for example, a specific project uh, can be, uh, you can limit, focus, narrow the conversation around, around just that project. But I do want to also show you how you can increase the urgency of your message, of your communication. So we would, we would hit a new conversation and you know we could begin by typing. There are more features here. For example, I can um, create up the level to an announcement. Now you can see just like above here, you can type a headline, subheading, and then include more items there. So it definitely improves the visibility and urgency of uh, the message. Furthermore, Microsoft Teams allows us to store our files um, using SharePoint all in one location. Furthermore, we don't have to um, have a wide range of files here. It can be all very specific to a project or endeavor um, that is we're currently using. Still within the Microsoft uh, Teams app, we can add this uh, app called Tasks by Planner and To Do. These tasks come out of a planner board. So this planner board is associated with one of the channels and now we are managing uh, tasks um, with all within Teams. So for example, what have I been assigned here? Well, I'm gonna double click here. Now, um, or even when as a project manager, as you're assigning tasks, you can assign it to one or multiple people. You can add some tags. There, there are 25 customizable tags that are used to then filter. Uh, for example, you could make this by department, by priority, uh, however your business process needs it to be. There's buckets and um, you can, this is probably one of the ones that a lot of people look for and that's progress. How is your task? progressing. You can even label as your project manager, you can say, you know what, please, this is urgent. And, you know, be conservative with our use of the urgent because it's all urgent, right? When we're trying to operate within uh, scope and uh, time and uh, budget. Uh, furthermore, uh, start and due dates, you, your, uh, your resources will get notifications of what's due within at least three days and definitely on the day of and even more so uh, after a task has uh, passed its due date. You can add a little more checklist, a um, little more detail here. 
um, and uh, you can even keep a running log for the communication just around this specific task. So you can see the communications are very well blended here, uh, very well integrated for, for your team. And anyone can access the communications. You don't necessarily even have to be uh, assigned this. As long as you can see your board, you can see the, the, the tasks. So for example, even though uh, I have this task and Tim has this task, I could still come in and see what is Tim's progress and uh, and where are things at. Oh, we've got that checked off. That's great. That, that was a key component. I was worried, would that ever get done? And it, it has. So again, all within Teams, and it just requires building um, some planner boards. Uh, from a higher level, you could see where are our tasks at. And uh, nine hasn't started yet. Hmm, I, I, I better check up on that. No, nothing late. Fantastic. We are keeping things in front of us. So at a higher level, these tasks are um, are being vis are visible, and we can see them. Of course, the the buckets features is one of the premier ways to look at this. We can group it by assignments, so that way you as an individual can see just what you're working on. And I can see, huh, David doesn't have any task. Well, he's completed his, so maybe I don't need to assign him anything else at this moment. And we can go right down the line and just see where's everyone ask, uh, where's everyone's tasks at. And I can see Tim's got a lot on his plate. Perhaps we should uh, use, um, perhaps we should get some of that off his plate and uh, balance the workload a little. Still within the Teams app is calls. Now this requires additional um, purchasing um, and configuration, but uh, you can now still keep your calls all within um, Microsoft Teams. So uh, you get a phone number and, um, and you can still communicate with internal and external clients all within Teams. Of course, one of Microsoft's Teams premier features is the ability to host a virtual meeting uh, secure to uh, based on your company's, uh, your tenants restrictions uh, configurations. When you set up a meeting, you can invite others. Uh, you could meet now. You could say, you know, let's schedule it. Is it going to be a webinar or uh, a live event even? Of course, with meetings, it allows us to improve the communication and really get everyone on the same page. For example, if I went back to my tasks, let's all get on the same page and look at the planner board. We could look at the schedule and say, all right, how are, how are we progressing right now? Um, you know, I don't see many tasks uh, in progress, so let's see what's going on with the team. So here's one way to, to do that is we're sh we share the screen. We all are meeting right now and we can all talk about the, uh, the specific task. Uh, that way it just reduces confusion, uh, improves the team um, synergy and, uh, and makes your job a lot easier as a project manager. So I hope you enjoyed that demo of the tools that can be used and utilized for your project management communication. Now, while there's a lot of sizzle and flashiness in the project communication tools, really the stake or the meat of it actually resides within the project uh, management communication or how you manage really the communication. Uh, remember, the communication is its an exchange of ideas. It's uh, the idea to be common, to have shared ideas, or even, you know, let's have that same good feel attitude about um, a project, about an endeavor. Don't forget that communication can be confusing. There's a lot of barriers that uh, cause it to be confusing. So be aware of that. Uh, have a plan. You know, don't don't just say, oh, this will work every time for every person. Consider your team, the message that you're sending, and uh, the method that you choose to do that. Uh, definitely want to consider also how urgent is it? And, you know, as the and 
the location, audience, and message. And as these factors increase, the complexity increases, and you definitely want to be mindful of the tool you're choosing when the complexity increases. Of course, give time to clarify. Allow your team to communicate. Uh, the, uh, you know, as it says, you know, cut uh, measure twice, cut once. That way, you're sure that after you perform the the effort, the time, the task that it's done right. And as a project manager, um, you're just going to create a much more steady flow uh, workflow for your team, and uh, and hopefully a better result with uh, for for your client with hopefully within budget, within scope, and within time. Thank you again for joining us on Webinar Wednesday. If you found this helpful, we'd love to get connected with you through phone, email, or one of our social media outlets. Thank you again for joining us, and we'll see you next time.